from the world headquarters of the Colorado Beer Trail, we're live from the loft for the first time ever. And with us today, tonight, is Dan Hayward. Dan, welcome. Pleasure. To the Colorado Thanks Beer so Trail. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you very much. Dan is owner of the of, of Savory Spice Shop in Boulder, Colorado. It's on Broadway, just just north of the Pearl Street Mall. That's right. And uh, Dan, it's great to have you here. And we're going to talk about spices tonight. And, Very excited. You know, there's a lot of great stuff that you do with beer and spices, and you've been right at the forefront of that with a lot of local brewers. You bet. Um, tell me a little bit about about just Savory Spice Shop in general. You've been here and, sure. and doing that for quite a while, haven't you? That's right. I, I started with Savory Spice Shop in 2005. Mike and Janet Johnston, the founders of the company, uh, uh, start, started off with those guys just part time. It was my part time fun job. And uh, they got wildly successful after their first store in Denver and opened a second store in Littleton and brought me on to be an owner and a partner to open up the Boulder shop in 2008. So we've been going strong since then. It's our seventh holiday season. We're well Great. into uh, Christmas shopping. And, and, and you're, no, you're no kind of fly-by-night shop. You were, named, you were named Downtown Business of the Year in 2009 That's for Boulder. Right. Yeah, that was That's a fantastic. nice honor. Absolutely. Um, so tell me a little bit about your work with brewers locally. When sure. did that start and, and what did you do? You know, it probably started uh, pretty soon after we opened in 08, 09. And I've been a big, you know, supporter and lover of craft, the craft brew industry since I moved to Colorado in 99. Mm -hmm. uh, that's when I really got turned on to really good beer. I uh, grew up in Georgia, a Georgia native, and uh, you know I was weaned on Jack Daniels and Budweiser. Uh, <laughs> but thankfully, uh, moving to Colorado kind of turned me on to uh, what real good you know craft brew is. And you know some of these guys had reached out to me. Um, some of them I reached out to them directly as well. But uh, just getting into finding out what these brewers are looking for and trying to make something uh, unique. Uh, you know th these guys are on the forefront, especially here in Colorado, kind of the Napa Valley of all the beers, um, good, of yep. creating something that uh, every tap room has something very unique and different, and uh, they really want to, you know, take it in that direction. So, you know, these guys have come to me and said, hey, you know, we've got an idea for a beer. What do you think? And very that's good. And we kind of go from there. Um, and did that start with, with what? I mean, I know you work with Left Hand and mm -hmm. their, what their, their uh, uh, the, Fade to Black, That's right. Volume, three, volume Three, with all those yeah. different kinds of chilies. Yep. I still have bottles of that. Oh, good on you. Because <laughs> it's, you know, it's like high gravity. It's going right. to hang in there for a while. And Definitely. I tell you, I open one once a year with, yep. with a friend. And, and the, the change in that beer over time mm -hmm. with the peppers, the heat, it is, it's just phenomenal. It's like it, it does all these different things with the with I bet the it's pretty bottle. remarkable after it's been sitting for a bit. Yeah, yeah And I is. know they, re, you know, they, they uh, revisited that one, I uh, guess, what, was it last year, year before, where they put out yeah. the 12 packs of all the different volumes and uh, a much smaller scale. Now, that, that was a huge project. It was probably one of my biggest first initial kind of forays into the, you know, craft brew uh, world and working with Left Hand and Row over at Left Hand and Eric, the owner. Uh, they those guys ordered you know over 600 pounds of dried chilies. It, it took a truck <laughs> and a car. My eyes are watering and, just now hearing about it. And the brewers when they came out and saw all these chilies, you know, was, they were just beside themselves. Wow. And, uh, and watching the pictures of those guys deseeding everything with gloves on and masks. And, right. Uh, that that was you know a really good start into you know working with you know Left Hand and Oscar Blues and Upslope and. And those guys, I, you know, I, I met Matt from Upslope probably in 2008. We did a, an event at the Governor's Mansion in Denver. Oh, wow. And um, really got introduced to them at the time when they were really small still. And, you know, just to, you know, everyone, you know, we, we all start to meet each other. And, you know, these guys talk to another guy and they say, hey, you know, we met Dan from Savory Spice Shop in Boulder. And those guys have a world of spices, over 450 to choose from. Right. And you know, if you're looking for something unique or you know, Dan knows his flavor profiles, it's something that I've um, always enjoyed, especially in the cooking realm. And you know, there's, go talk to him and see what he can do for you. No, but from what I've heard, you're, you're really very hands-on. You don't just, Here, here's your chilies, you know, go for it. You, how do you prep these? What, what, what are they gonna do when you toss them in a wart? Or, yep. or you know, if you're gonna not dry hop with them, but, but add them after. Um, right. the, the boil and things like that. So tell me a little bit about the, the prep and your, and your work with them that way. You know, I, I usually ask the guys, you know, wh where are you going to put it? Are you going to put it in the boil or are you going to put it in the secondary? Where, right. you know, where is it going to come in? Um, you know, we're, we're sometimes worried about strength, worried about bitterness. Cheers. Mm -hmm. um, indeed. Welcome and the um, thank you. Mm. So, you know, knowing how some of these spices are going to react to heat sometimes, right. um, we don't want to uh, overpower. You know, typically with spices, you know, uh, less is more. 
um, I, you know, I, I've discovered in, in hearing maybe some of the mistakes that people have made over the years right. uh, and adding too much or uh, taking it a little bit too far or trying to put it into that, uh, that, that wart there at the beginning mm -hmm. uh, where things have gotten you know, too spicy, too bitter, uh, too sour, uh, something to that effect. So it's just kind of a matter of knowing what they want to do with it, you know, how they, they always ask, well, how much should I put in there? Sure, right. And, uh, you know, it's a little bit of a guessing game. And I think, you know, most of these guys experiment on very, you know, small batch style uh, first and see how it's going to translate and then kind of ramp it up from there. And so um, for me, you know, I, I'm not a home brewer, but again, you know, knowing the, the flavor profiles of spices and, and being a lover of all the craft beers that are out there, it, it's really helped me kind of help those guys decide, you know, how much the quantities uh, and when to put, kind of when to put it in, you know, right. when it's going to really translate the best. Now, it seemed to me that that a lot of your work is is kind of primarily if you're going to do a chili beer of some sort, because mm -hmm. I know, uh, you know breweries like uh, uh, Twisted Pine mm -hmm. does that 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 ghost killer thing. The ghost killer, just that's amazing. Still, it's still sitting in my fridge. Man. <laughs> I still have not. I'm waiting for the perfect chili. Right. I'm going to yeah. put it in a chili. It's, it, it's, 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 it's I tell you, I. I the heat on that, it's 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 not it doesn't linger so long. It's yeah. not like it's not like if you just take a bite of a bonnet and, right. and just and, and your whole face is exactly. is just melting down for the next fifteen to twenty minutes. <laughs> right. But it does it has a great mm. heat and it and it just drops off nicely. But is it, so chilies and beer Obviously, right. obviously, a pumpkin beer, you're going to use allspice, cinnamon, nutmeg, and things like that. That's right. And then coriander. Mm -hmm. um, any other spices that you've been working with different breweries with? I mean, I know, I mean, yeah. that we don't really have, Avery's probably the closest we have to what would amount to a dogfish head that just right. goes, you know, crazy with different kinds of exactly. spices and things like that. Tell me tell me what you've done with uh, with beers here locally with uh, Yeah, I think, well, um, Upslope would be probably most notable for their pumpkin beer that they mm -hmm. put out every year around the, you know, October, November, um, right. I think maybe late September. Uh, won a gold medal one year at GABF. And, um, you know. Were you involved with that? Uh, you bet, absolutely. <laughs> awesome. You know, unbenounced did you get a, to me, did you really. Get, did you get a copy to, uh, to hang, yeah, hang we got a Yeah, we got a little bit of, you know, we got Very a little good. bit of press out of that. That Very was great. Good. And, um, you know, getting, helping the brewer dial in, you know, the recipe. Right. And, and, and now they've, you know, they've mirrored it and taken it out uh, over the last years. And then we use the same recipe. They call me up and every year they keep kind of ramping up and making more. Right. And uh, we make, you know, a special batch for them. Um, so they can just throw it right in the tank and it's good to go. Um, another one of, of remark was with uh, Row at Left Hand. Uh, with, um, I believe it was Mark with... Um, uh, Old Chicago, uh, their, oh, beverage, okay. their beverage director, mm -hmm. uh, and Timson, who had a farm and growing some pumpkins. Uh, we called it Four Foodies Pumpkin Ale. It was nice. only available in the le uh, left hand tap room and at all the Old Chicago's. So, Ro and I, and uh, the farmer and uh, the guy from uh, Old Chicago, went out to the farm one day. We brought a bunch <laughs> of pumpkin beers, right. uh, of different, you know, of different brands. I uh, tried them all. I brought, you know, what I call usual, the usual suspects, right? What we know in pumpkin beers. Right. The, the cinnamon, the, pump, the, the, pumpkin the clove, the, yeah, the pumpkin pie, exactly. These guys, you know, how do I make my grandma's pumpkin pie? In a bottle. In a bottle. <laughs> and put it in the glass and taste right. like grandma's pumpkin pie. Um, but I always like to bring, you know, a couple things that, you know, are going to be a little surprise or add a little different twist sometimes. Mm -hmm. and. And let, the brewer, and let the brewer decide for example, where he wants. Uh, for what, example, what would be a, a twist? Um, what Roe decided for the Four Foodies Pumpkin Ale was, in addition to the cinnamon, the clove, the nutmeg, we added kubab berries, uh, which are tailed pepper from Indonesia. Wow. And we added galangal root. Uh, galangal root is used in a lot of uh, Thai cooking, a lot of Indonesian oh. cooking. Wow. Uh, it's a cousin to turmeric and ginger. Kind of has this nice earthy, warm spiciness to it. Okay. Um, when you smell it, you kind of reminisce of I the ginger. I put ginger, ginger there. in my pumpkin pot. I uh, see. You know what I'm saying? That's right. Okay. Exactly. Um, so he added, you know, those types of things in there as well. And um, you know, again, they, I think these guys are always willing to kind of experiment on a small scale, right. see how it translates, and then kind of take it from there. But they, you know, they want to be. Unique. And when you say when you say experiment on a small scale <clears throat> with a with a craft brewer like Left Hand or mm -hmm. Upslope. Um, are you talking about a five-gallon batch that they do to just kind of get their proportions correct? Is that is that? I'd say you typically they're you know they're making right. a firkin or something like okay. that and okay. say you know they they'll get the spices. You know they, those guys keep great notes. I know, I know they're right. they're scientists at heart. Sometimes a lot of them are, um, you know, and they'll throw that bag in there and you know kind of agitate it a little bit, wait a week or two, um, tap that sucker and and see what happened, and then say okay. 
well, you know, so and so spice maybe came through a little bit too strong. Let's back down. You know, clove can be really overpowering. Right, yeah. Um, that's ginger one too. Ginger can be yeah can be a little too spicy sometimes. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's kind of how they they dialed in so that you know, does this, this process start what August September yeah, before they exactly yeah so yeah, they start calling me you know about July August right. you know I'll get an email saying hey we're starting to think about it and then very soon thereafter with us especially right. you, know, you know Christmas is coming up too so how <laughs> right. are we gonna how are we gonna do that and um, it's been a lot of fun it's been so a lot of tell fun. me about some other spices coriander is okay. a pretty popular yep. spice to use in in some holiday beers and things like that what right. uh, what portions of, of, of coriander, and I know there's several different kinds or, or varieties of coriander. What, That's right. what, is, what is a, if a home brewer wants to try to approximate, you know, a, a French Cezanne or something like right. that, what, what would they want to uh, do as far as quantities of, of coriander? You know, um, for instance, uh, Upslope buys a lot of coriander from me. I think it's going in their Belgian White, mm -hmm. um, their, uh, their Belgian White IPA, I believe it is. Right. Um, you know, they're buying, you know, 16 pounds for, you know, 70 gallons or, you wow. know. Wow. That's some, a lot of Yeah, that's a lot. And, uh, but, you know, they're, they're wanting to feature that flavor. Um, you know, with a lot of spices, uh, the good thing to do is to, um, one way to accentuate some of the flavor, maybe to uh, dry toast them a little mm -hmm. bit. Right. Um, crack them a little bit as well. You're going to get full in more surface area and, right. uh, and really get the full flavor out of it. Uh, the, you know, the coriander that we carry is more of a, like an Indian coriander. Uh, that's kind of the flavor that most people are familiar with, and there's a couple other varieties out mm -hmm. there, but you know, it's, it's, we carry what's pretty typical. So, can you give me, give me a laundry list real quick of, of the different breweries you've worked with, as uh, you know, helping them with spices, either one-offs or, or you yeah. know, year after year. Uh, yeah, le left hand, upslope, Avery, and um, Oscar Blues. You know, those are, those are the big boys around town. Mm -hmm. um, and then you know, since then. Uh, police, places like 300 Sons and here in Longmont, which right. is great. We're happy Just to have those guys around. Yep. Exactly. Um, Gravity Brewing, um, uh, 12 Degree Brewing in Louisville, um, the, what, uh, Revolution in Erie. Um, you know, it, it, kind of the list goes on. I mean, we, I've seen, you know, some of the guys come to me fairly often. Some mm -hmm. of them, are, you know, it's kind of a one-off. Um, they, you know, they have, a, some of these guys are, really true to certain styles of beer. They don't use right. a lot of spices, uh, but I always drop by and uh, you know, I drop my card and say, hey, if you're looking for a special project, Great. Um, that's what I'm here for and, and I can walk you through the, the flavors. And you, know, you just tell me, for instance, uh, Mark just came to me from 300 Sons and he had a collaboration with one of the home brewers that they're doing, the mm -hmm. home brew collaboration. Like a pro-am. Uh, exactly, mm -hmm. and um, he made kind of a, a Mexican chocolate, a little bit of spice in there, some interesting flavor. And he came to me and said, you know, this is what, you're, what we're thinking, you know, what are your thoughts as well? And so mm -hmm. we kind of dialed it in from there. And um, I, I'm certain that uh, maybe a week or two, uh, we'll be able to go over there and have a nice pint and see what Great. comes up. So how did you get interested in, in spices? I mean, I noticed just, you know, reading a little bit, a little bit about you, yep. you, you were in the Peace Corps for a while. That's right. Where were you in the Peace Corps? I was in Russia, as a wow. matter of fact, in uh, 01 and 02. Okay. Fascinating experience. Um, I, not, I mean, are they known for, for big spicy foods? It's not like Thailand definitely or not. South <laughs> Africa, right? Definitely not. Um, although I, it, and, uh, beer, uh, in Russia, the, you know, the, the local beer, eh, it's just, it's easy drinking, that kind of thing. Right. Um, they, they're the one main brand that they have. That's a collaboration with Finland. It's called Baltica and they have it numbered zero through nine. Zero is non-alcoholic. Nine's a high alcohol. <laughs> I just found the one that I liked. I think I liked number six and it was kind of right. a porter and I kind of stuck to that one. Um, you know, spice-wise, as far as their food, I mean, they use a lot of fresh herbs and things like that. I had a lot of uh, missionaries in my family and, and had always, you know, loved, um, you know, kind of exotic places and traveling and things like that. And, uh, you know, I've done just enough in my life and always looking for more. Very good. Uh, I spent 15 years in the restaurant business, so I know my way around the kitchen. Loved to cook, probably started cooking when I was about second grade. And, uh, and knowing flavors and, you know, cooking to me is uh, easy and cathartic and fun. Uh, and I understand when people come into my shop, it's not that way for a lot of people. Right. And so we try to make it uh, exciting and interesting, and we have a lot of great recipes for people. And uh, and same thing with like home brewers, you know, right. you know, all these guys coming in. Um, and I can usually tell when when someone's a home brewer out a few few certain things that people are asking for, like grains of paradise. Right. Okay. Um, you know, that's kind of been, um, I think what was it, Sam Adams kind of revolutionized, right. you know, the use of grains of paradise. It's, you know, it's a pepper, it's in the peppercorn family. Uh, the Portuguese made a fortune on that stuff way back in the day, and it has kind of a floral, 
uh, spicy, peppery finish to it, and it's a really interesting addition to a lot of different styles of beer as right. well. You mm -hmm. know, one thing that's really interesting, I, I noticed on your website, um, I know it's winter time, but you know, for people to kind of put in the back of their head um, for springtime, you offer a great, a, a really great service, and, I'm sh and, and I'll ask you about the beer angle of this, but mm -hmm. the, the farmer's market in Boulder, Mm -hmm. Just a couple blocks away, right? And you you actually encourage or ask people, hey, bring bring the great you know fresh produce that you purchased at the farmers market. Right. Drop by this, the the savory spice shop, and you know we'll help you kind of prepare some dishes, soups or or, or just you know prepared prepared different dishes. Yeah, show me with, what you got. Yeah, show <laughs> me what you bought, yeah. and and we'll put some spices with it. Yeah. And I'm wondering if somebody could you do the same thing if somebody either said. Here's a beer I want to make. This okay. is a style of beer. Or okay. bring you in a bottle, which yep. I'm sure you wouldn't mind if somebody brought That's you in right. a bottle of beer. <laughs> bring you in a bottle and say, I love this beer. Help me with this. I, I can taste these things like mm -hmm. a like a Liberty Ale winter, a winter okay. ale, right. you know, that has the coriander and yep. or orange peel and things. But right. there's some other things going on there, uh -huh. too. Right. And and maybe dissect those flavors mm -hmm. and help them with, you know, here are the spices involved and, and, uh, and help them kind of put together a, a, you know, a holiday or a special beer um, based on, on something that they really like. We, you know, I've done that for people. People have brought me their beer and said, hey, you know, let, let's open it up. Let's have a taste and right. tell me what you think. And, um, you know, I just ask a few questions and where do you want to take it? Is it, you know, is it more on the floral side? Do you want to pull, pull in some spice here? Are you looking for, mm -hmm. you know, more of the aromatic spices in clove and allspice and nutmeg? Or, you know, where do you want to take this kind of beer? I, I, I worked with uh, Sam at Upslope, the brewer over there now. And uh, we wanted to make, you know, kind of a, a series of Fierkins with spices. And mm -hmm. so he brought in all of his core beers. And uh, we sat around and, you know, we had like 30 cups out. And, you know, thankfully it was at the <laughs> end of the day. But um, we just walked around and started pulling out spices and kind of crushed them a little bit and put them in the cup. And, you know, maybe not the best way to do it, but we thought, okay, well, with the brown, um, what about these chilies in our, in our brown ale, or, or what paired nicely with our IPA, or wow. you know, or what's good with the pale ale? And mm -hmm. so we took some really great notes, and uh, and Sam and Charlie over at uh, Upslope, uh, or you know, it's kind of this ongoing project that we're looking to right. do, and, and just to and, play know, and play a little bit. I got to say, it, it, that's one thing that I love about beer is that you can you can it, it is has so much dimension to it. I mean, mm -hmm. you'd never think of putting coriander in wine, right? right? Okay. Exactly. You you just ne you, no you don't do that, mm -hmm. um, and it's just it has so much dimension to it, and it's really great that you know you're such a great resource here locally, yeah. Um, um, for folks here in the on the front range, and for people to kind of think about your website. Yeah. As far as your website, is that a place where people can go and and maybe just if they're not you know local to Boulder or the, mm -hmm. or the front range, yeah. and they have some questions that they could pop you an email and say. Absolutely. I'm, it's, I'm Dan at SavorySpiceShop.com. Okay. Uh, always happy to uh, field questions about, about brewing and uh, cooking or whatever, you know, right. related to and, spices. And, and, and and just yeah. real quick, of course. You, you, it's, it's not just talk here. That's right. Okay? We've got, uh, we've got we this. We got it. So this is the, the Brewmeister spi uh, Spice One collection. of our brand new gift and sets. Here we have in here, we have uh, the, the uh, Make Root. Macroot, Ma macroot yeah. uh, lime powder, That's right. grains of paradise that there people have been asking about. Yeah. Um, minced orange peel. Now, the orange peel and coriander is definitely That's is right. definitely one of those combinations that you do for yep. for a white a Belgian or something. Yep. Um, juniper berries. Um, that juniper nice berries. piney, that nice piney flavor, but you know, compare it with a, a, a lighter style beer. Okay. Do you want to pull in that you know that nice juniper flavor? So kind of like a a, a, a a gin pale ale. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Um, coriander seeds, obviously, coriander, and then yeah. and then your lemongrass. A yeah. lemongrass would do, would be like what a, more like of a light a kind of citrus, a, a light or citrus, that yeah. not so much of a lemon peel. But That's right. A little lighter, right? Yep. Exactly. Great. So this is actually a package, and and you know, what something like this run? Oh, it's like twenty five bucks. Hey, there's a stocking stuff. Yeah. I have exactly. big I have big socks, so you know, there you go. <laughs> You're all set. Perfect. Um, so, Dan, let's uh, let's talk a little bit about. The sticker. Okay. We have the we have the sticker. Excellent. And um, I'll have you do the honors. But Indeed, uh, this sir. is our this is our fridge, Excellent. the Colorado Beer Trail fridge. All right. So find yourself some uh, yourself some well, empty real I estate. Think, I think I should exactly. And you know, I do see a lot of familiar. Uh, you know, you're here. You get Avery going on here. I know, and I got left, got hand, left hand, here. hand here. You've got uh, let's see, oh, uh, upslope. Upslope is. Uh, I saw an upslope up here. All right. Great. There you go. Excellent. There you go. Ah, I think I see a nice I see know where you're going. Right I know where you're going. I know where you're going. Right there. Very good. Right there. Excellent. 
Excellent. Thank you. Well, we have Dan Hayward from the Savory Spice Shop in Boulder, Colorado. That's Thank you very much. Right pleasure. there on Broadway. That's we, right. Uh, he's, his, his shop is located just north of the, of the Pearl Street Mall mm -hmm. on the west side of Broadway. Mm -hmm. um, walk on up there and, yeah. uh, and, and check it out. It's, I'll tell you, walking in that shop, the, the, just the aromas are delicious. It transports so, people. Uh, it's great. It, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Great. Hey, thanks a lot, Dan, for being here. And, My uh, pleasure. Thank we'll you. We'll see you again on the Colorado Beer Trail. And this is live from the loft, and the, the loft is, we're closed.